There are new clues this morning about a possible motive in the Nashville bombing. Federal authorities have identified the bomber as 63-year-old Anthony Quinn Warner. DNA evidence confirms Warner's remains were found at the scene of the RV blast on Christmas Day. The vehicle exploded outside an AT&T AT &T communications hub, knocking out cell and Wi-Fi service from Tennessee to Alabama. Authorities say there are no other suspects in Nashville is considered safe. Mola Lange is in Nashville with the very latest. Good morning. Well, good morning, Jerika. Sources tell CBS News that investigators are looking into whether Anthony Quinn Warner was targeting communications infrastructure by blowing up that RV outside that AT&T transmission building, which is right down the street there. One source tells CBS News that Warner's late father had actually once worked at AT&T. And investigators are also looking into whether he may have been influenced by online conspiracy theories into 5G technology. Surveillance video captured the sheer power of the Christmas morning blast, which brought downtown Nashville to a grinding halt. Yesterday, the FBI named 63-year-old Tennessee resident Anthony Quinn Warner as the bomber. According to a law enforcement bulletin obtained by CBS News, agents found a note while searching Warner's house that led them to a witness. That witness told the FBI they spoke to Warner about a week before the bombing and that Warner gave them his car, saying he had cancer and didn't need it anymore. Gloves and a beanie hat were found in that car, and DNA from those items were used to match the DNA gathered from the remains at the scene. We're still following leads, but right now there is no indication that any other persons were involved. At least three others were injured in the blast. These six brave officers rushed to the scene that morning saving lives. Probably about five minutes after we're there, I'd say that the timer then started counting down. Officer Tyler Llewellyn was the first to arrive, charging into harm's way as the RV eerily played the song Downtown by Petula Clark over a loudspeaker. It played in between minutes, counting down the bomb's imminent explosion. We essentially made contact with, I believe, six, seven apartments, and asked them to evacuate. The explosion happened. I saw this huge fireball in the sky, um, at least twice as tall as our building. Among those rescued were Noel and Jeffrey Rasmussen and their two children. They ran out just minutes before the RV exploded outside their building. I'm just so grateful that they were so insistent. I mean, if they'd kind of just, you know, walked up and down the hall and said everyone evacuate and left, I mean, probably would have slept through. This video shows Officer James Wells walking away from the RV just seconds before the explosion. He said God told him to check on fellow officer Amanda Topping just down the street. So I turn around and start walk, walking in the opposite direction and then three seconds later, boom. So, you know, I'm not going to shy away from that because that's what saved my life. That's what got me to see my kids and my wife on Christmas. Authorities have not yet settled on a motive. They are looking at all possibilities, including credit card records, which preliminarily show the purchases of security alarms and chemical precursors, which are, you know, perhaps the material that could have been used to create a homemade bomb. Now, they also have recovered a hard drive that may have belonged to Warner, They're trying to access that. But at this point, David, they do believe that he acted alone. Mola, how are the three people who were injured doing this morning? Well, David, those injuries are said to have been non-life threatening. They are expected to be okay. We should note that those were just civilians, regular people. They were not authorities or first responders, regular people who were injured in that blast, but they are expected to be okay. Bombing on Christmas morning. Mola, thank you.